Good morning and welcome to worship. Today we welcome some special guests. The message from God's Word will be brought to us today by our area officers, Majors David and Michelle Terracini. We look forward to hearing the message God has given them for us today. At the beginning of this new day, we lift our eyes from the darkness to see our God, to see his nature, to renew our faith, to be filled with hope, to have our thinking and behaviour reshaped. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Let's lift our eyes to our God as we sing together. Holy, holy, holy. Father, we're coming to your presence this morning and we bring all of our family, church family, to you and we ask that as they sit quietly and meditate on your word and think about your love for each one of us, that we might be blessed greatly. And Father, a friend of mine has put these words together. Lord, sometimes the world seems to threaten. I want to curl up in my corner and forget everything and everybody and lock the door and pull the curtains tight and the action that is out there is tough. But when I'm forced into it and when I have to get involved, Lord, apologies, I sometimes get angry and I get aggressive because I'm scared, Lord. It's not that I want to act that way. I'd rather be a friend to all. I'd rather see the smiles when I appear, but somehow I'm afraid of my own inadequacy. And it's because of that, Lord, that I show my teeth and not a smile instead of a snarl. To show that I'm tough, to hide a tremor. Lord, what am I afraid of? It's not a perfect world, I know. You know, you have the cause to know, remembering the cross. There's violence and there's pain and there's doubt and distrust. And they make people frightened, aggressive like me. But underneath they're trembling like me. Lord, remind me when I flex my muscles and clench my fists that the only weapon that really guards me is love. It's not easy. The fear, the stress comes 
and it does come, but Lord, if I win through to peace, it's only through love. Opening myself to others, showing that there's nothing to fear from me, believing in them, maybe even before they believe in themselves. And as I start that love like that, maybe the reflections I see in the mirror will be love too. Lord, help me to start to love again today and bless all those who are loving you too. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hey guys, can't wait to see you in Kids Church today. We're going to be exploring how Jesus doesn't want us to pretend to love him. He wants us to actually love him. It's about our thoughts and our feelings in combination with our actions and what we do. Can't wait to explore this with you with Kids Church and to see some other familiar faces as we go. You may have heard the expression, trust has to be earned. Well, when it comes to our walk with God, he has certainly earned our trust. Many of us have proven the faithfulness of God. Indeed, generation after generation testify to the truth that when we place our trust in Jesus, God fills our hearts with joy and peace. Well, even though many of us have experienced the blessings that flow when we trust in Jesus, we've also discovered that trust has to be learned. Unprecedented circumstances, not yet answered prayer, even simply following what Jesus calls us to do in any given situation can expose our need for greater trust. I invite you to think back over this past week. Celebrate those times where God brought you peace and joy. Those times where you took your cares to God and trusted him with them. Think also of those times where you attempted to carry your cares by yourself or where you fretted over issues. Ask God to bring his joy and peace to you as you face those situations. Ask God for the grace to trust him more. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise Just to know, thus saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him Oh, for grace to trust. 
trust Him more. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he found anyone there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? He asked. I am Jesus, whom you persecute, the voice said. But get up and go into the city, where you will be told what you must do. The men who were travelling with Saul had stopped, not saying a word. They heard the voice, but could not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground and opened his eyes, but could not see a thing. So they took him by the hand and led him into Damascus. For three days he was not able to see, and during that time he did not eat or drink anything. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I have had many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he, ha he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptised. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Michelle and I jumped at the invitation to participate in the Bundamba online worship meeting because we have been enjoying this worship experience since the pandemic started. 11 weeks ago. Every Sunday morning, we put Bundamba on the flat screen, enjoy the music, the Bible message, and in particular, the participation of core members from the youngest to the oldest. We're loving it. Bundamba core, you have not lost your sense of community and family worship through this pandemic. Well done. And do you know what we've noticed? Laith and Kayleen have given inspiring leadership. They, along with the core family, have trusted God through this, no matter what. With no physical gatherings, no sections or activities, no Riverview Farm chapel, no supper, yeah. kids at home for weeks on end, you have trusted God and obeyed him, no matter what. This isolation has been hard and challenging, but you have kept going. You keep living like a core family, who care for each other and provide wonderful worship experience every Sunday morning. And Jesus Christ continues to be honoured and glorified in you and through you. People's lives continue to be blessed and encouraged, and we are really inspired by it. Thank you. In the New Testament, Acts chapter 9, to be precise, we read about a man named Ananias, an everyday Christian person like the rest of us, who continues to inspire us today, not because of his great credentials or resume, but simply because he trusted God no matter what. 
He was going about his ordinary, everyday business when the spirit of Jesus intervened, presenting an enormous challenge to Ananias. But before we look at that encounter, let's get the background story. Another man by the name of Saul of Tarsus, a Pharisee, a strong community leader, he was charismatic and he was a maniac. He was an obsessively driven personality type. If he had a job to do, you don't stop until it's done and you trample on everyone that gets in the way. Saul's job was eliminate all Christians. And as a legalistically driven Pharisee, there was only one way to deal with these pesky Christians and it was house to house and drag them off to prison and even off to death. And he wasn't just satisfied to create this violence in Jerusalem. No. In Acts 9, he's on a road trip to Damascus in Syria, a distance of 220 kilometres. It wasn't just down the road. It wasn't, I'll be back for dinner, honey. This was a serious, month-long, violent campaign attack upon the churches in Damascus, and they were terrified. Now picture the throne room in heaven and the glorified son says to the father, I think I'll go and have a chat with Saul. And so with no time like the present, Jesus approaches Saul just before he reaches Damascus to have the chat, or as we say today, let's do coffee. <laughs> with a flash of light from heaven, Jesus speaks to Saul. Why do you persecute me, Saul? <gasps> Who are you? I think Saul may have had a list. Um, which one are you? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. <gasps> Did you hear that? Jesus said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And I love that Jesus takes our pain personally. Saul hasn't laid a finger on him, but everything he condoned, everything he did to God's children hurt Jesus. Jesus takes our pain personally. He sees us, he sees our trials, he feels our heartache and our grief. The one who created our emotions feels every one of them. Saul actually thought he was serving God, but now he finds out he was persecuting him. When confronted with the holiness of God in Jesus Christ, Saul's good works and legalistic self-righteousness suddenly looked more like filthy rags. So there's Saul lying on the ground and Jesus continues the chat. Now go to Judas's house on Straight Street. I've told him you're coming and Ananias will come and see you. Saul, who was charging like a wild bull, was now blind and being led like a little lamb. So now it's time for Jesus to chat with Judas on Straight Street. And here's a fun fact for you. Straight Street in Damascus is still a street today. What? Talk about a heritage listing. Anyway, Jesus says, hey there, Judas, I've got a special guest coming to your house. Make up the bed. Don't bother about any food provisions. He won't be eating. Don't put the spring water on ice. You won't need that either. All right. Who's next? Oh, yes, Ananias. Better not forget him because, as it turns out, this is one of the most crucial conversations in the New Testament. Totally inspiring. I love Ananias. I love the fact that he's someone who is plucked out of relative obscurity and plays a crucial role in possibly the most significant event after Pentecost. He's your Joe Average. He's you, he's me, he's a follower of Christ and his obedience to Christ is about to be tested. Hello, Ananias, says Jesus. Uh, can you go to Judas's house on Straight Street? Talk to a guy from Tarsus. His name is Saul. I told him you're coming so that you can restore his sight. Now, you can see Ananias getting the details, right? Judas, Straight Street, Tarsus, Saul. Saul! Is this a joke, Jesus? This is a suicide mission. I'm not sure where you get your information from, but let me tell you about Saul. He is not your friend. He is not your man. He has caused mayhem in Jerusalem and he's coming here to do the same. By tomorrow, I'll either be dead or in prison and you are asking me to place my hands on him. Jesus responds, go. He is my man to proclaim my name to the Gentiles around the world. And what happened next? Ananias trusted God. Ananias obeyed the voice of the Lord no matter what. He went to the house in Straight Street in spite of his fear and trepidation to have the chat with Saul. 
And what I love is how Ananias greets Saul, brother Saul. What an inspiring model of Christian courage and grace. Didn't Jesus say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you? Brother Saul, those two words powerfully impact my Christian life. Last week, Saul, you hated everything I stood for. Last week, you hurt my people. And now this week, you come here intending to create more fear and havoc among the brothers and sisters. But the Lord Jesus has a different plan for you, a wonderful plan. So if it's good enough for Jesus, you're a brother to me. Ananias prayed for Saul and his sight was restored and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Ananias received his mission with fear and trembling, but his trust in Jesus overcame the fear. He trusted God no matter what. What an inspiring encouragement for all of us today. Out of human weakness, God's power is made perfect. Even the devastating weakness of a global pandemic cannot stop the power of God in us and through us. Isolation and ungatherings cannot stop the kingdom of God coming to this earth and the will of God being fulfilled in us and through us. Through God's power, Ananias was able to lead one man to Jesus, not in a church building, but in a friend's house. Through God's power, we can share the love of Jesus with someone in our street, someone at the local cafe, someone who is isolated. God used Ananias for that crucial moment in the history of the early church. We didn't hear about him before this. We don't hear about him again. But he was the one who led Saul to Christ. And Saul, who became Paul, was the one who led thousands of Gentiles to Christ right across the known world. I invite everyone who is listening to this message to surrender your will to Jesus Christ today so that in his power you can trust him no matter what. No matter what the crisis you are experiencing or the grief you have, no matter what difficult decisions you have to make, perhaps God is calling you to have a chat with someone today or this week, a phone call, a visit, an email or a text for the purpose of drawing them closer to Christ. It can be inconvenient or time-consuming or even dangerous. But as we trust God, as Ananias did, we get to have a front-row seat in the grace moments of other people's lives. What a privilege.
Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.